Let's talk about education. I'm 16. I'm a sophomore in high school, and I want to talk to you about education. You're probably wondering what I could possibly be qualified about to speak on the subject, and my answer to you is this. Every student is qualified. My demographic is on the receiving end of education reform and conditions, and of all people, I feel we can speak the most to whether or not we are benefiting and learning from our education. So, I'd like to offer you a different perspective from that of the educators you usually hear discussing education, that of a student. So education, more specifically, art. Wait, hold on. Art? How? It's just pretty pictures and colors, right? Think again. Because the way you've probably come to think about art in respect to education is really not what art integration has the potential to become. At times, our education system doesn't take the full opportunity to integrate art and artistic concepts into kids' learning. Personally, I've noticed that the art integration I've received is just a surface-level, off-handed attempt to incorporate art somewhere into the curriculum because they have to. For example, following a painfully detailed art lesson in sixth grade, I made a clay sculpture of a head, which ended up looking like everybody else's in my class, because the lesson was just that guided. Now, as a result of that, I've still got an ugly clay head in my room four years later, but did it relate to my education in any way? In the eyes of sixth grade me, it was a distraction from the rest of the school day, something to delay getting back to our science reports. I'd even call it a waste of time. I mean, artistically, I got nothing out of it. It was a step-driven lesson, and I had no opportunity to think outside of the box. And as a student, I also gained nothing because it connected nowhere to everything else I was learning. The reason I bring this up is because my educators had an opportunity, and they let it slip through their fingers. They had the opportunity to leave me completely in the dark, forcing me to use my own creativity to think. The approach to this art lesson is expressive of a noticeable pattern that can be clearly seen in our learning. It's approached with linearity. Logical thinking, a strict progression of steps with no room for creativity. Just an art-based activity with the end result in mind, hence the in-detail steps and the identical clay structures at the end of the day. Issues start to arise with a classroom that only supports logical thinking. It starts to take away from the creativity that kids already have. Linearity is not inherently bad, but a logically tailored curriculum eventually ser su serves to suppress creative thinking. The linear approach to education is the most commonly taken one, and the problem is it stimulates one kind of intelligence in the classroom. Now, when I say these kids already have it, I mean kids are already naturally creative. Here's some proof we can all relate to. Remember pretend play? It's a part of growing up. When we were young, we all did it. We, would be, we, we were encouraged to be imaginative and create our own worlds. We would, be, we would play house, we would play doctor and chef, um, and everything in between. We have this limitless creativity as children, but then we get to school and we're introduced to logical thinking. It's as if we're drawn away from the creativity that we spent the first part of our lives getting to know, and we're taught that we have to part from that in order to grow up. But see what I mean? We don't need to teach them how to be creative. We just need to learn how to nurture their imagination, and that we can do through art. The way my peers in our, uh, and I have been taught art in our education, you'd think art and education are like oil and water, and I really wouldn't blame you. Because in essence, our, our education system supports linear thinking. This means steps, procedures, and a very orderly way of going about things. It can be seen in something as simple as the, uh, as the clay sculpture example. Even in that lesson, we were given instruction and direction to the T. If we all have to follow the same procedures and ans answer the same questions, individuality goes out the door. Here's my issue with that. Art is a creative subject, and kids are naturally creative. Art is purposefully vague. The whole concept of art can be anything from three completely blank white canvases, also known as modern art, to the Mona Lisa to slam poetry, to the Mona Lisa giving slam poetry. The reason I suggest art pulls so much weight concerning education is because it offers us an opportunity to stretch our minds and think differently. See, art is creative, and it thrives on self-guided innovation. And it can only affect us positively because ultimately, It'll just nurture the natural creativity that we, as children, already have. Art's potential is vast. Not just art, but artistic thinking. A theory for a classroom approach outlined, outlined by Professor B. Rosenschein sums it up pretty well. Guided practice versus a mechanical ex execution of steps. Rather than mechanically executing steps, encouraging the practice of a high-level cognitive process and activities that make kids think for themselves, but still teach the same thing, that's the approach we should take.
This is a perfect example of artistic thinking in action. So, recap. Why is creativity important again? Creativity leads to innovation, which is the basis of change and technological and cultural advancement. Creativity is, in essence, our future. Art is capable of, educating, of uh, aiding education positively because it uses our creativity, the left half of our brains. Instead of finding the answer to the problem at hand, it teaches us to think with a more creative approach and ask questions. And this is important. We don't tend to see art as an opportunity. It's usually a brain break or a buffer in the curriculum. I won't deny that art is being taught in schools. There are short art blurbs, and the final product might be a city skyline using a steady in perspective or something of the like, but currently art is in there because there has to be a supposed balance between the arts and the sciences. The idea that it's kind of like, it's kind of like a means to an end to get rid of the idea that we teach kids in a STEM-driven way. So, as we saw before, kids are creative by nature. It's better to facilitate and encourage that rather than suppress it in order to achieve a certain goal that the curriculum outlines. So how do we get how do we approach art in the right way? How do we make it seem like an opportunity rather than a burden? Take an open-ended approach to the subject matter. Instead of a list of instructions to follow, we should be allowed to reach our own conclusions following a loosely guided lesson and left to our own devices. This isn't art exactly. It's the thinking that stems from art. Give us the tools we need to get creative and leave us to our own devices. So maybe instead of making us make the same identical clay heads, teach us the basic anatomy of facial structure. Show us how to handle clay and let us do our thing. It doesn't matter if the results are pretty. Really, the clay heads were really, really ugly anyway. It, what matters is that we leave the lesson having learned something. We should start seeing education as the building blocks of our future, not just a means to an end. Right now, up until this point, you and I have always been taught to look for the right, answer, for the right answers, the right solutions. Let's start thinking about art as an opportunity. Let's start thinking about creativity as essential. Right now, I look for the right answers, but I have a challenge for all of you. Forget the answers. I challenge you to look for the right questions. Thank you. Thank you.